Accessibility, which is a term that means different things, different people. Some people use it to specifically refer to like disabilities and people with those sort of deficiencies there. That's not what I'm necessarily referring to. When I talk about accessibility, I mean in a literal definition that your game in itself, and maybe it includes some other aspects, but in the context of video gaming that you're shooting for the lowest common denominator. And I feel like right now we're dealing with stale with a stale industry, especially in the twi- uh, the AAA studios, even when it comes to the microtransaction stuff that a lot of you guys are griping about. I'll, I'll, I'll expand on that in a minute. It's all centered around trying to appeal to the lowest common denominator. You're shortening. See, you see the fighting game community is dealing with this right now as well. Shortening the commu- uh, the uh, excuse me, the skill gaps uh, in, in certain games and trying to basically effectively make it appeal to the widest demographic for various reasons. These people do that. One of those is centered around difficulty in game. Now my issue with this in, in, in games, definitely in the modern era is that can some games pull it off? Whatever. I'm not oblivious to that, but my issue with this has more so been centered around. Yes. I'm repeating myself. People that have seen my videos in that, like if you look at souls games, and the lack of difficulty, and I know the games journalists wanted an easy mode on the remaster for Demon Souls. They didn't get it, thank God. But you completely break the mechanic of the game by basically, um, because the experience that the developers have in mind from soft, having it in, in mind is about what it is. So if you have to adjust difficulty, and everybody does it in a different way, making you overpowered, you know, is a lot of, you know, maybe minimizing enemies, um, weakening them, uh, being less punishing. Everybody does it different differently. But it ha- it means that if it goes from, let's say, let's say easy, very easy, whatever you're playing, let's say some single mode, single player mode uh, game of a game, then, you know, something is baked into that game that had to be considered for all of those difficulties, which often does not mean just because you have more options, it makes for a better experience. It's actually horse shit. You can actually ruin the experience because you're trying to encompass too wide of a player base, right? Uh, and that's been my argument. But here's someone that we're going to watch in a bit who is making the case uh, that all video games should have easy modes. And, and the ex- explanations that she gives for this is literally everything that I've been saying about uh, this goofball ass shit. So let me, let me, let, let's just look at it first. Uh, and what it was, you saw me post about this on Twitter. Uh, let's go ahead and watch it real quick. All video games need easy modes. I'm gonna. Okay. Um, I, I, like I said, it's just a little cringy. Y'all have to bear with us. Uh, but yeah, there she is. Explain. But first, if you're one of those, you're not a real gamer if you play games on easy mode, people, you can scoot right along there, buster. Because listen, I love video games. It it doesn't sound like it, by the way. Also very bad at video games. I am a big kid with a big kid job and responsibilities like car payments, and I don't have time to be good at video games. Okay, let's just stop right there. And this is the argument for the the accessibility aspects, these annoying little shits that unfortunately the gaming definitely with AAA Studios are catering to that demographic right here in what you're looking at. So when you wonder why some of these stuff, even with microtransactions, we'll get to that in a bit. Again, it's baked into these games. It's because of folks like her. Right. So I'm so tired of this bullshit when it comes to we see this in like the MMO space, especially where folks want to get to the end game content, best gear, and it's either it's either locked from a, from a time perspective and or a, a a a difficulty perspective. So what that means is is a barrier there. It's a barrier of entry, and because we have all these, comp- every, you know, I don't know if it's the trophy generation, but everybody's a completionist now, and everybody feels like they should be able to access every portion of a game, no matter how bad they are at it. And the excuse that people, when it comes to this, they bring up is just what she did is that, okay, I'm an adult and therefore I have stuff to do. So the game should be made towards me. 
where do you dumb son of a bitches get the idea that not let that the rest of us that are let's say decent at certain games don't have fucking jobs like what how did that narrative gain so much traction where did that come from where people bring this up like well i have responsibilities i don't have to like you think you're the only motherfucker with a job most gamers that i know and including the ones that play it hardcore have an actual nine to five job where are you getting the idea that you are special because you have a job we all have those well, well like we all have those that's not a you're not mentioning anything maybe maybe your time let's say is allocated to other things when you get off of your job and maybe you have a small window of what you want to dedicate towards gaming but that's not our problem that's not our fault that's, that's not our issue. Some people, that's their, that's their primary hobby. So when they do leave their nine to five, they go get on the game for a, a couple of hours, few hours, four hours maybe. Like, I, I, how did that narrative gain so much traction? It's, I don't have time to play it because I have responsibilities. You're not the only person with responsibilities. Most gamers have exactly those. Most gamers have exactly those have jobs. You're not special. No, we are not hating on people that make video games a priority. If being good at video games is one of your priorities, what an excellent way to spend your downtime. I am flabbergasted by your skills. It's just not one of my priorities. I have many skills in this life, but beating Hollow Knight mini bosses is not one of them. That's your problem. See, that's your problem. Like she, first of all, she conflated two issues and then semi abandoned it because she was like, well, well, okay, you're good or you're getting good at the game and that's your priority. It's not mine. Therefore, the game should be built with me in mind. Like, why? Why? What? what why? Why? Just Okay, so you've made it. This is fun. She's, she called herself a gamer. Oh, I love video games is what she said. While then saying that having a skill element, which basically all games do aside from the you know, Looney Tooney ass games, uh, the baby baby games, which uh, again, if that's what you want to play, that's your business. But to act like, remember, she's starting that all games need these easy modes catering for her because she doesn't have a priority to be a fucking mini boss, mini boss and fucking Hollow Knight. Like, what is this? I don't want a challenge. Life is hard enough. I want a cool, interactive story. Remember, oh man, I, 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 just, I know when I say I'm right, you get people frustrated. I'm tired of you saying you're right. I don't care. I don't care if you're tired of me saying I was right. Remember when I said, and I've said this for years, but you know, I've specifically done long form videos on this. That's exactly what normies want. Interactive movies is essentially what they want. Interactive movies where the game essentially holds your hand through it. And you, the button pressing has nothing to do with the actual gameplay. It's more of you want to interact with it. You want to LARP. You want to LARP. That's what you want to do. LARP. Right? And that's what, unfortunately, a lot of games have turned into. Right? There's this hyper emphasis, emphasis on graphics, which that's all awesome where stuff looks so realistic. But if the gameplay is bogged down, it doesn't mean anything. And most gamers would agree with me on that. Not these types. They they don't want they don't care about that. That's it's, it's it's they want they don't want a challenge. They want an interactive story, which is essentially you want to play. You want to LARP. That's what you want to do. You want to LARP, and and you don't want to have to think to to in your LARPing either. You just want to mindlessly uh, go through it because you don't want a challenge. You know what happens is I get frustrated on a fight I can't beat, and I end up giving up, and I lose out on so much cool story. What like th what? <laughs> This person claimed to be a gamer. See, this is what, what the, the unfortunate thing about gaming. Yes, it is like the industry. It is Eclipse Hollywood. It is a big, big industry. And as it expanded, you got so many people that wanted to be a part of it where it was no longer something that, that, that belonged. I don't want to, I hate to use that term, but you get it. Where more nerds played it, right? You had, it, it, it was more, and it didn't matter. Like, that doesn't mean that, like, 
when I say gamer, I'm not using that in a in a sense of every single person plays all types of games. No, there are some people that are specialists, like people that play fighting games and almost exclusively fighting games. They may be damn good at it, but that's the type of games they play. Some people like RPGs. Some people like me like RPGs and sports titles, uh, uh, sim sports titles as well. Like that's what I mean, and I just wanted to make that make that distinction there. But this this chick is on some on some like other shit acting as if she's a gamer but her 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 gripe right here her frustration here is basically she gives up to me that should be indicative and there's nothing wrong with you giving up well yeah it is but you get what it is that i'm saying you say that you don't want to be challenged you're going through some mode you can't be the boss and so you give up to me if i'm a developer of a game what that means is that that specific game was not necessarily built with you in mind. And that's why we're not getting things that push the envelope because you got folks trying to in gaming studios are trying to build games with this person in mind. And even if they a lot of these very, very hard modes are gimmicks and they're not even that difficult. They're not even most in the very nowadays, definitely with triple uh, A uh, titles. They're not that difficult on on, on very hard. I don't know how many single player games. I played the entire Cyberbug on fucking the hardest fucking mode I I possibly I possibly could. And the bitch, we slept through it. We slept through that damn thing. Same thing with uh, with Ghost of Tsushima. Like it's not like these games are like even one. They're very hard modes to me for a lot of these games should be normal. Right. Like they're, they're normal, but you're saying that you can't beat a certain mode or certain thing and you bail, which fine. That's that should be you acknowledging that. Well, this isn't necessarily something that's built with me in mind, but that's the problem with the overemphasis. We're seeing this in basically every corner of every industry, the overemphasis of inclusivity and that and accessibility. So you want everybody or so many people to have access to it and you get people who feel entitled to that. Well, I, I can't beat it. I'm missing out on so much story. Your problem. That's not our problem. The ones that I don't know were able to do it. That's not our problem. Why should the game be fundamentally dumbed down? And by dumbed down, again, I have to reiterate because some people don't understand with game design or any design, something is being built on scale if it has multiple difficulty levels, right? Something is being built on scale. If you don't think that that scale in itself could dumb the dumb the game down, fighting games where they have they widen the gap of a of a of a like a parry for the for the sake of uh, uh, for timing efforts for people that are new to the game, right? That's you. You effectively broke the game. You broke the game trying to keep that person in mind, right? So this idea with well, more options the better. That's that's bullshit. That's horseshit. Sometimes that make makes sense, but don't think that it equals more options equals better game. That is bullshit. Video game creators, this is my plea to you. Slash slash, on with the story. Easy modes, please. Thank you. Okay, uh, here's my game developers. Fuck her. That's um, that's that's my plea. Please build games in mind with a certain audience. And and depending on what type of game that it is, your game can be very lucrative in the event that that's who it's for. Souls games are just that. They're built with a certain type of gamer in mind. The game journalists continue to bitch, moan, and complain that that game has no easy mode, so they can't experience. They're not good enough, right? From Soft says, "You know what? Get good. That's all. That's what this game's about. Get good. Get fucking like. And if you can't, you're just not going to experience it. I'm sorry." Right. Actually, no, I'm not sorry. That's just what the game in mind. If you want to play some Hello Kitty shit, uh, you know, and be be waltz through the entire. Go do that. There's games out there with that person in mind. But the idea that every game needs to keep the person that is bad at video games in mind is horseshit. But it goes to, unfortunately, the inclusivity 
uh, generation of people that feel like just because it exists, they should be able to access it and bask in all of its glory. I'm of the opinion that that's not the way to do it, but that's because I'm not about my shortcomings. I don't get like uh, been out of shape or offended at that. If I'm not good at a game, I'm simply not good at the game. That doesn't mean there aren't other people that are good at it, but I don't expect the devs to change for me and my inability to adjust. That's the other guys who do that, right? The people that like we just watched, they expect to be adjusted for. If I can't beat a game or if I'm playing a game, which I think I'm fairly good at, but I get beat because I'm not as good as uh, someone else by someone, let's say in a competitive setting, I don't think that the game should be, change just for me and I don't get a fit like I got beat by the better player it's nothing wrong with that and I feel like a lot of us that game are okay with that but unfortunately there's a loud demographic of people who call themselves gamers aren't really that and they have entered this industry and they feel like it and the devs are listening to them that the game should be built with them in mind because they want to experience a story. And this is why a lot of these games that, uh, that, are, that are being put out, unfortunately, uh, are shying away from the competitive aspects. And then they're 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 being built, baked into the game is these basically it's a long interactive movie, which that may make sense in certain settings. But to act like every game should embody that is just nonsense. But I want to speak on one thing to end it. Because, again, a lot of folks gripe. EA, let's let's focus on them because I played those games, uh, particularly FIFA. And a lot of people bitch and moan about microtransactions and stuff in games. And they seem to completely miss who the people that those target. Outside of the free to play elements, um, well, actually, no, not outside of that. It just people tolerate it more with free to play games, but it's still it's some of those games are still the same. What are generally microtransactions like with loot boxing and stuff like that? Who are those games? Who are those? Uh, who's the target demographic for those? Gaming normies, the people that say they don't have enough time. That's why it's based upon progression. EA. Games with, with, with the microtransactions are baked into it. Loot boxing uh, with with uh, with the packs. Let's start. Let's focus on FIFA game that I play thoroughly. That whole game, that whole mechanic is built into the game for the person that doesn't want to play because, yeah, you could play it, collect coins, complete challenges so you can then get some of the best players in the game or you can swell. So you don't have to spend money and spend, uh, so you don't have to spend time and you can spend your money. Progression based loot tr- my, microtransactions, which most microtransactions are not all. Some are strictly cosmetic, which to me, those are the more preferable ones. I hate pay to win. But I, the reason why you don't see me talking about like the young years and the, and the angry Joes and the Jim Sterlings, who always bitch about microtransactions, seem to completely fly over their fucking head who they're aimed at. You can bitch about greed, corporation, corporation. Who are those aimed at? Your neighbor, the one who is making videos like that and says they think that they, they want to experience the, being the best or being able to, let's say, get over a hump without playing the game. That's why it's based. It, 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 it's a. It's effectively most of these microtransactions are progression boosts, man. They're geared towards the gaming normie, not the person that's gonna play it. For the gaming normie, so you can sit here and gripe about greed, but the those are specifically targeted for that person, and to lose sight of that or ignore it is being disingenuous. This is why I don't sit up here and get because I know who those are tied to. I hate pay to win. I hate it. I absolutely hate pay to win mechanics built in games, microtransaction where a person just says pay and get the best cards, the best players. And then because the gameplay is generally broken because of the accessibility, that person can unfortunately compete with someone who's way better than them. I hate that shit. But they're specifically built for the person who thinks that because they have a job, it's a unique situation because they only want to dedicate X amount of time towards gaming and don't want to have to think and don't want to be challenged. So they 
pay money to get the progression so they could skip through that shit. That's who those types of microtransactions are catered to. So if you want to address that problem, it ain't just, and I'm not saying that the, obviously the companies are without, I'm not saying that they're without, you know, some sort of fault, but you can't ignore those types of people. This, this, those types of microtransactions are catered towards that person, this type of person, not guys like me that will just fucking play the fucking game. Normies, that's who they're built for. So my plea to 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 the developers, which to me negates her plea, build the game with an audience in mind. And if that audience is some people that the main primary players are going to be folks that actually have gained some sort of skill in it, build it that way. Does that mean that people like this are going to be mad because they can't access the story? Miss out on so much story? Yes, that may be the case. But there's nothing inherently wrong with that because there may be other games where this person can have their hand carried through the entire uh, uh, deal. But instead, unfortunately, the accessibility obsession in this regard have led to a lot of stale a lot of mundane, a lot of games that are all over the place because they're getting pulled in these different directions because they're trying to cater to the widest demographic because poor Faye, I think is her name, poor Faye just can't access it because she's not good at games and doesn't like the challenge. You just watched a clip from my podcast for Canon's sake. Catch us live at 12 p.m. throughout the week over at youtube.com slash youngripper59 and follow us over at odyssey.com slash at youngripper59. If you want to watch the entire video cast after the show is over, just be sure to become a member on the YouTube channel. Of course, the full audio portion of the podcast is available for free on all major digital platforms or just visit forcanonsake.com.